Good morning. I am home. All right, safe last night. I'm so thankful this morning. It's going to make a report on the 12th day of my El Norte solo bike tour. Well, let's start with the prayer. Father, what a glorious day, glorious morning. Woke up happy, smiling, in spite of back pain, because you are Lord, your master. Brought me safely home, and I'm so thankful. Thank you, Father, for our partners who prayed and interceded. And so thankful that I could meet them today. Lord, you be exalted and glorified, Lord, through testimonies that I share in Jesus' name. I really think that's what it is. I got so many testimonies. Um, and I really just do it in one shot in one day. So I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to actually um, to epilogue tomorrow. So there'll be one more day of just wrapping up 12 days of my journey. Wow. Uh, yesterday, I start my day at Elk Grove and then uh, came to San, uh, Santa Clarita, Valencia, and then came home. Uh, it took about close to five hours, well, more than a five hours, uh, because I'm riding motorcycle every 150 miles. Uh, I have to stop and refill, which it's not a very good thing if you're uh, long distance travel. That's why my bike is for meant to be riding in the city. It only has 3.5 gallon tank. So nevertheless, wow. Uh, it, once I pass a certain section, it got so hot. I had about five layers that all came off. <laughs> And it went down to two layers and hot. My, my arm got burnt uh, from just being exposed to the, this, uh, this section just was exposed and then got totally roasted. So it was hot, it was crazy hot. And I had to do a quick stop at a gas station and had egg sandwich, egg salad sandwich. was with cold brew coffee from Starbucks, which was good, quick. So basically I empty my tank and then fill my tank and fill my tank. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. Uh, once I made to Valencia or the home of Six Flag California, I, I remember going there as a uh, 12 year old. Wow, that was awesome. But now uh, I saw and passed this sign as 59 year old. Uh, right next to that post was the coffee shop that I met this incredible man of God. Wow. I asked uh, John, uh, Elder John, I said, when was the last time? I mean, when was the first time we saw each other? It was uh, year 2000. So 21 years ago, I met him in the airplane. And since then, uh, we've been friends. Uh, he's just incredible. And Elder Kong next to him. Uh, so this is Elder Cho, John Cho, and this is Elder Kong, both of them. Just such faithful friend, amazing. Uh, but I met Elder Cho first 21 years ago in an airplane. I was in an airplane going somewhere, uh, Albuquerque. Um, and this man walks up to me and says, Pastor O, I said, <laughs> you know, and I get always nervous when that happened because I just don't remember people's face. So I said, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, you need to let me know where, I, where we met. 
He said, oh, you know, you don't know me, but uh, you came to my church to preach at Valley Methodist Church. I said, oh, that's wonderful. Well, let me have your card. Then I start sending my uh, prayer request, but then it ends up so that he re-invites me to his church. I do a start doing a revival meetings for the church, and then they start a new church. They wanted to really uh, do missional church, and so they start a missional church, and this is kind of a crazy story. Um, so they start a missional church, and the first year, about like five, six families, they like dedicated, we're gonna focus on mission. So they give something like 10,000 or $20,000 to for the mission cause and things like that. And so, you know, they were supporting like 20 missionaries and they were gung ho about mission. Uh, so the first year with six families, they gave like 10,000. But then 10 years later, the church so grew so much so quickly that they built the church and all that. And then I think it was 10th year uh, celebration. Uh, the senior pastor who supported our ministry for 10 years says, Pastor o, I mean, this is kind of sounds crazy, but because our church grew, and because we built the building, um, we have zero budget for mission. <laughs> so all the offering that came in, we used for ourselves and for this building. And, and, and he was so apologetic. He was so sad. And eventually he leaves the church and goes to Korea because there's kind of confusion. You know, it's like, why are we doing this? <laughs> I thought we want to be a missional church. But uh, eventually, uh, that's what happens, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but Elder John, I mean, so faithful. I remember him just inviting to his home and he's been such a faithful supporter every single year. I mean, I would just receive a love offering and he would, he would not even send it, give it to me. He would just walk up to B of A and send it to my account. So it's like a pleasant surprise, but every time there's a lack, there's need, and then there he is, you know. And even this time, it's just like, wow. It's, it's so crazy how, you know, actually if I did not do this 12 day trip, uh, we could have been a big financial crisis, but because I did 12 days and because just people generously gave, um, wow, you know, uh, we're overflowing. So praise the Lord. Pat, uh, Elder Khan also, oh my goodness, his testimony, how, you know, his business went down and five, six years ago, his major accounts, you know, like, serving like 50 school this school system, but there was some kind of foul play. They cut him off, but he said, you know, Pastor O, I just rejoice. I just thank God, you know, for 15 years of serving these schools, that one thing led to another. He ended up getting a contract for painting, but painting the same thing spray. When COVID-19 happened, Lord gave him wisdom that the cleansing, the disinfecting will come. So he actually bought all the equipment, bought all the solution, and bam, you know, all the school district is asking him to disinfect. And so he said that COVID-19 has been the most prosperous time of his business. And like listening, I'm thinking, wow. You know? <laughs> and of course it was my turn to give testimony of what COVID-19 did, how I started YouTube ministry, and it was fantastic. After that, I came home um, and uh, wow. And I thought this morning, I said, Lord, what did I learn from this trip? And I thought, plan for the worst, expect the best, right? If you plan for the best and expect the worst, that's not a good thing. You need to plan for the worst. You know, I wish I plan for waterproofing the equipment. So, you know, um, just it only took like five cents plastic bag that to cover. I didn't plan for the worst. I just thought that oh, it's going to be okay. No, it wasn't okay. Uh, plan for the worst. What happened? This happens. This happened. This happened. 
uh, if GPS doesn't work, do I have op option B? I didn't have. So it was panic mode. But at the same time, expect the best because I just had a wonderful time of 12 days of journey. I mean, Lord blessed it um, primarily because of this value encounter with Christ and encounter with others. You know, the testimonies that I hear from friends for 30 years, 40, some 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, and, you know, uh, from crazy people like surfer, surfing for Christ people, to business people, to professionals, my own siblings, my, uh, you know, distant relatives, and they just step up and they love, they want a fellowship, they honor, they value relationship and we don't really calculate, you know, what am I gonna get from them or, no, it's just, I was so overwhelmed by friendship, love and, and, and the new ones that we made, um, the old ones reconnected and, you know, some are weird, some are out there, some are just, you know, some are physical body oriented, some are intellectually oriented, some are spirit, and yet learn to love them. You know, yeah, it's okay. That's where they are in their leg of their journey. You know, love them as they are. The value encounter with Christ. You know, the whole thing about Jesus, others, and you. Wow, you know, it became so alive. And, and I learned how to reflect on a point and turn that into meditation. And meditation gives us insight about uh, the reflection point and so it goes on and on and on and i and ultimately i realized life happens daily i mean yesterday i was coming and freeway five was completely plugged and i remember well thank god i'm in a motorcycle i was cutting the lane i mean when i start out uh, they said you know your gps will tell you eta expect time of arrival it jumped from like, well, you get there by 2.45. I said, okay, because our meeting was at 3. And then it jumped about 3.30, 3.40. It's an hour delay. I'm like, what's going on? I'm on freeway 5. There's nothing to be delayed. Well, they shut down one lane. So they had literally about five mile long uh, um, stall, stalling time, five miles. And that was an hour long delay. But I'm in a motorcycle. So I just went and not even cut through the line in between. I just ride all the way through the shoulders, five, five miles. And, and then I see my, my GPS telling, you know, expect time 320, 310, 3, 245 again. <laughs> so, but on the way here, I realized after 12 days, of just enjoying the countryside and mountain. Wow, when I was coming home five from uh, Magic Mountain to Cerritos, people are crazy. They were going so fast. I, I'm in Diamond Lane because I rightfully, but they're pushing me from behind, going from, you know, I mean, it, it's 60 mile, but they're going at 70, 80 and just giving me pressure. So I had to move away and they're going crazy. And uh, of course, then there was a, from downtown LA to Cerritos, it was complete stalled. We're moving at about five miles an hour, all six lanes, all five lanes. So that's the time that I <laughs> cut the lane again and came home. When I came home, I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm so happy that, that this 12 days has been Wonderful. And I've been riding and riding, riding the, my bike and riding the book. So um, I will be from tomorrow after epilogue, I'll be spending about a week uh, editing Zen and the art to be alive in Christ and inquire into joy through meditation and reflection. Wow. It should be awesome. So I, um, Pray for me, my back still hurts. Uh, Lord said, well, slow down. Jack, calm down. Enjoy your time home with your wife and a guest from Cambodia now. She came to get vaccinated and so it's gonna be wonderful, wonderful uh, 
weekend. Lord bless you. Love you guys, brothers and sisters. I send you off with kiss. Mwah.